This episode has been made possible thanks to the support of ElectroRent and Keysight Technologies. Greetings Earthlings! If you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. Our spacecraft transponder is now fully up and running and we have turned our attention to the ground part of the link. In the last episode, we finished the bring up of our up data test box. We were able to read in spacecraft commands from a paper tape and let our test box encode it into bits and sub bits. Then we had to reproduce the complicated analog encoding scheme to generate the weird phase shift keyed signals according to the original NASA spec. This was done with the friendly help of some good looking HP equipment from the 1960s and also some modern Keysight 1. We were able to generate the correct signals. Then off to the microwave Keysight equipment it went for transmission and we were able to send our first spacecraft commands. It sounded something like this. This was already complicated enough, but this is only part of the transmission. Voice was transmitted along the data at the same time. We showed how this was done in episode 12, using two different subcarriers for voice and data. That's a lot of information tangled together. How come it doesn't mix? Let's show how that all works with our modern Keysight equipment. I'm making some progress on the receive side and I'm getting the hang of the MXA signal analyzer. So now I am running this VSA software which actually uh, runs on top of Windows so my MXA has a keyboard and a mouse and a tube. Uh, but what this really is, is actually kind of neat. It's a, an SDR sort of pre-programmed for you and you can just change the boxes here and I'm just receiving at the Apollo frequency and I am doing the demodulation, uh, the analog PM until they write an Apollo demodulation I'm just using the, the analog uh, phase demodulation and right now I'm demodulating nothing and I'm going to add my carriers. So first I'm going to add my data carrier and as you've seen now some stuff has appeared. So on the microwave signal you see several sidebands but that's normal in uh, PM, actually in FM2, when you do a single tone you actually get several sidebands. A little skippable side note on phase modulation for the Cogno Senti. When we first modulated our NASA PM transmitter in episode 13, we got many side peaks. And many people familiar with RF thought that something may be wrong with our PM transmitter. Shouldn't we get just two sidebands? Is our transmitter nonlinear or overdriven? Turns out, not at all. It's working plenty fine, thank you very much. The many sidebands are not a bug, but a feature of phase modulation. See, when you do AM modulation, you do the mathematical equivalent of multiplying two sine waves, the carrier, sine A here, and the modulation, sine B. And according to this trigonometry formula, that generates two other sines, or in this case cosines, one at the sum frequency and one at the difference frequency. So you get the spectrum you are used to just like this with two side peaks, one for the sum and one for the difference. But not so when you do phase modulation. In PM, you don't multiply two signs. 
you take the sign off a sign and it's completely different. Here we are not so lucky. There is no simple analytical formula for the result. In practice, it generates a series of sidebands. The PN spectrum then looks like this. It varies depending on the modulation index M. Here are two spectra, one for M equals one and one for M equals four. We actually use this property to our advantage when we retune our transmitter. We simply adjusted it until we got the right sideband content. Fortunately, when you do the demodulation operation, it's the exact mathematical inverse. So all ends up well, and you recover a single pure tone from these many sidebands. And that's exactly what we see in our analyzer demodulated spectrum. But when you demodulate them, you just recover one carrier, 70 kilohertz, and that's the 70 kilohertz tone. Now, I am going to add this voice carrier at 30 kilohertz, and once again, in the microwave regime, it looks kind of funny, but here I'm just recovering my 30 kilohertz. And there's a few spikes, but they're 50 dB down, and that's probably because I'm doing just a partial FFT transform. So you can see now my two signals, and I can uh, now modulate this in FM with the voice. So I'm going to do voice. Apollo 12 Houston, try SCE to auxiliary over. Apollo 12 Houston, try SCE to auxiliary over. So you see how it's very clean, it doesn't affect the other one. And now I'm going to add the modulation for the data. So there it goes. So right now I'm transmitting all zeros. Uh, but I have already loaded my t tape message here, which is my one of my abort messages. So if I send it, so I'm now sending some data. And you see how it appears in the spectrum over here? You can hear it. Apollo 12 Houston, try SCE to auxiliary over. So that's how you transmit both the data and the voice at the same time without them interfering. That's the beauty of subcarriers. Note I have added a tube to it so it works a lot better. How is that for you? An MXA with vacuum tube on it. It's exactly just a USB key. <laughs> But wait, it's not finished. To get the complete uplink spectra, we need to add one more thing. We need to add ranging. And ranging comes in the form of a noise generator that uh, Ken Sheriff has made a contraption that reproduces the pseudo-random noise generator that they use at NASA. And yes, that's how they measure the distance of a spacecraft with noise, but not any noise, a very, very structured noise, so structured that you could find out how much uh, it had patterns in it and you could find out how much time it uh, would take to go to the spacecraft and back when it's turned around by the transponder. But for all intended purposes, it's going to look and sound like noise. If I turn it on, and you can see and hear it, no, it is just introduced noise underneath our spectra. Uh, it's much faster than anything else, so it extends to several megahertz. So I have to go about 10 times here, change from 400 kilohertz to 4 megahertz. And here we go, we have our complete uplink spectra with ranging, which looks suspiciously like this picture from NASA, with the lows of the noise and the data on top so our data is still there hasn't gone anywhere for a voice Apollo 12 Houston try SCE to auxiliary over and Apollo 12 Houston try SCE to auxiliary over I've turned down the data because it's so annoying I'll turn it down again but basically that's the complete uplink spectra uh, and now you notice that they, they, they just 
put a low level of noise everywhere so you have to uh, so they just rely on the fact this time that it's the um, it's like 40 db down from the top of the voice and 35 db down or 30 db down from the top of the data but you have to be careful about it you really have to apportion let me turn the noise off you really have to portion the mod the phase modulation to all of these and there's this huge table here that I uh, try to reproduce and right now I am on this mode where uh, I do ranging and voice and data at the same time and ranging gets this weight of phase modulation 0.44 and both voice and data get one uh, but they optimize their signal uh, uh, to noise ratio all the time like for example if they are only doing ranging when they are just acquiring they'll just allocate everything to it same if they just do voice or same if they do data uh, and uh, so they just blast it if they can and then when they have to s do several things at the same time well they apportion uh, the modulation to all of these and there's a, an entire book uh, dedicated to calculating what those weights should be. Abort, abort, abort. Apollo 12, Houston, try FCE to auxiliary, over. Actually, they, they didn't send the abort at all. Apollo 12, Houston, try FCE to auxiliary, over. They probably did send a reset message instead. It's more fun to send the abort. So here you go, you have kind of a really neat demonstration of how that whole uh, stack up of subcarriers work.